Yeah, blessed love. Give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie. First, Honorable Priest Isaac here, just looking to board a plane to go into St. Lucia, where we will be celebrating more celebration. We're just coming off of the winter solstice. And now the Honorable Priest Kailash Leons at Mount Kailash, the rejuvenation center in St. Lucia, will be hosting the wellness retreat for this December, right after the winter solstice at Mount Anu in Antigua. So we're here at the airport. We're just looking to, to board the flight and of course, just continue to stay true to the YouTube channel. I'll be definitely posting up videos of exactly what is taking place at the wellness center and exactly, you know I me, mean, what is going on and exactly the part that I'll be playing, you know, and of course, for sure, if you're not going to join us this year, next year you could definitely begin to make your plans. But you know, the reason why I'm doing this video really is not to uh, uh, highlight that I'm going to St. Lucia. I already decided when we reach there, we will be uploading, you know, the, the highlights of the events. But I was just going through some of the comments and I noticed that someone was putting a little fire on Kwanzaa. What it is, I uploaded a video uh, from previous night, last night. We, we did a lecture at the, the first night of Kwanzaa, and we were speaking of Umoja, you know. Now, I'm not the organizer of Kwanzaa. I've never been an organizer of Kwanzaa. In fact, every year, the brothers, the brother, brother Israel, Elakim Israel and his family, who, who has been doing the Kwanzaa for almost eight years now, you know, always invites me once I'm in Antigua. And uh, I definitely always take the opportunity. But anyway, why I was concerned with the fire burning, and I actually mentioned this previous night in the lecture that I gave. And... Um, you see, as a conscious person, you got to be very balanced. Now, usually people that are dogmatic, very religious, these are the people that would burn a fire on Kwanzaa, African History Month, and all of these different things. And I must say, sad to say, a lot of Rastafari are not African-centered. No, they're not. They're Christian-centered, biblical-centered, but not African-centered. And, of course... We could argue about the Bible and the Afrocentricity of it. That's not what I'm going to try to pull out now because you could be biblical centered. You could be using the Bible and still understand the Afrocentricity therein. But most of us, we are lost in the, the, the European Christian, I would say, interpretation of the book, even the Jewish interpretation of the book. And the reason why I'm saying all of this is that every year, I do an essay competition for African History Month. I think most of you would know that. And there are those that consider themselves conscious that would appear or come to me and say, oh, I'm not in the African History Month business. Why is it they just gave us one month? I celebrate African history every day. And I'm telling you, eh, these people that usually talk about they celebrate African history every day. They're not celebrating no African nothing at any time. They may have some locks, a little beard, smoke some herb, eat a little idol whenever you see them. I don't know what they're eating when you don't. And I'm very serious, you know, I'm not mocking no one. I ain't pretending like I'm better than anybody. Trust me, believe me. I'm just speaking what I know. And I'm saying that if you take your time, you're gonna disrespect the ancestor, Brother Carter, Carter G. Woodson. This brother fought to get African History Month recognized. It look like they're gonna soon call my flight to board the plane. This brother, this brother fought. It was African History Day. Then it became African History Week. And then eventually African History Month. Remember, African History Month is not no underground you know what I mean? Secret business, you know. African History Month is something that is recognized by 
the United States of America. The United States of America, the people and the government, whether they like it or not, actually recognize African History Month. So it was something that the brother Carter G. Woodson and his team fought for. So look, personally, I, I, I'm not an African History Month person. I celebrate African history every day. And I'm not going to just quinch and bow and make my former slave master give me a month and somehow center me around this month and that's the month I'm going to wear my, my gele and my kente cloth and wrap up my head and hee hee and all of these different things. I do that every day. Me personally. I can't talk about the next person. I live my Afrocentricity every day. And I respect Carter G. Woodson for the work that he did and give thanks that it exists. But what I'm saying to you, but what I'm telling you now is this. Many of us, we are not strategic on the battlefield. For one reason or the other, every year around February, at least for the last, I would say 10 years, in Antigua and in the Caribbean, these schools and even people are starting to recognize African History Month. When I was small, there was nothing about no African History Month. And yes, it's a quote-unquote American thing. That's another excuse people around here use. Oh, that's an American thing, yeah? So where's your Antiguan thing? Independence and carnival? You understand what I'm saying? So I utilize the fact that people are gravitating to African History Month. And I use that time, and I use the growing culture to promote the essay competition, what does African history mean to me? And it's the best time. That's when the, foil, the, 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 the soil is fertile for that event. You understand? And using it, yes, I utilize it. And I give thanks. Me personally, I give thanks. At least there is a month somewhere that we can say African history. But remember, okay, that's my flight there. But listen to me good now. What I'm saying is this. It's the same thing with Kwanzaa. Whether you like Karenga or not. Kwanzaa was not designed as a religion. Kwanzaa was not designed as a theology. The brother and his team decided that, hey, listen, man. Christmas and Santa Claus is heavy on our people. Let us create a celebration around the same time and utilize some African principles in the Swahili language. As Brother Elakim said last night, there could be more than seven principles. You have loyalty, you have other things, patience. These could be principles, but they're not the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So a brother decided, hey, listen, I'm going to put some of the principles together. We're going to do this around the time of the holidays when people have a certain level of freedom. And, you know, basically, I would say it was designed to repel the, Christ the Christmas celebration. Now, again, Kwanzaa means the first. It's a Swahili word, and the principles are good principles. This is not a religion. Some of you, you're too religious. And what, what is sick about it? You ain't going to big up Kwanzaa, which is all African principles. You're just upset that it's outside of your religious sphere. And sphere, anything that looks like, oh, you know what I mean? It's not Rasta, or it's not Islam, or it's not Christianity, or whatever. You get upset and you're fire, but that is sad. And what that shows me, number one, those of us who say we're conscious, we don't understand our African principles. That's number one. And we are not free and open people. You could not be free with yourself. Hey, it's Emperor Haile Selassie, I praise in a man. When I say praise, I worship the King of Kings in a man. I don't play around when it comes to Negus and Agas. And I'm a Bobo Shanti of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress order. That's what I am. That's I, I never say that I'm none of them other things there. You understand? But as a free-minded thinking people, I love my ancient African culture. The culture of the Musi, the culture of the Dogans, the culture of the Kiswahili kingdom, these seven principles, um, Umoja, 
and, 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 and um, Nia and the rest of them. Purpose, uh, self-determination, uh, collective economics. What's wrong with these principles? These are good principles. Some of your religions don't even, and your conscious clubs don't even pick up these principles here. And you're going to fight down a little celebration. Never said it was a religion. It doesn't come with no holy book. No special person we put on the wall and say, let's praise him. The only thing that it's done, maybe they utilize Marcus Garvey colors. So what's your problem? So if you don't want to go, if you don't want to, you know, be a part of it, fear enough. If you're that extreme in what you do, well, you're going to fire burn it. To me, that's awful. That's sick. And it, to me, it's just a sign of ignorance. That's all. Straight up. So we need to break out of them mentality. That's all I'm saying. Take your time. Study your history. Be free with yourself. Because a lot of things you find are burning here. And I'm the person, I'm telling you. Look, I'm going to go on a plane right now. Some of us, we burn fire and oh, burn fire on the, the, the green, gold and red and red, gold and green. I'm a Baba Shanti. I move with the red up. I don't keep no green, gold and red around me. I don't. You think I vex with anybody that deal with that? Some of us, we burn so much fire. Even bubble. Oh, fire burn your red, your green up. Your yeah, fire burn your green up. Look at that plane out there. That's, that's an advertising. Of that. That's Virgin Atlantic. You check it? The woman on the plane there, the drawing, she's, she's flying a British flag. How many, of you, how many of you have ever been on Virgin Atlantic flying the English flag? Or British Airways? Or American Airlines? You fly it all the time. How can a bunny fire there? You're going into the plane with the red, white, and blue. But yet still you're bunny fire and your brother because he's carrying the Ethiopian flag that the world accepts. Whether you think Victoria turned it upside down or not, you carry you burning fire and your brethren that carry in the same colors as you, although you may have it in a different way. And let me be clear, you know, man. I'm a Bobo Shanti. And red up is what I defend. I ain't playing around with that. I don't joke around with that. But again, you got to be free-minded and have good understanding. You can't be going on so hot and fiery and then go be stepping in them kind of planes there. You can't be burning fire. Yeah, you can't be burning fire on your brethren and your sister because them is not the same Rasta as you. You are a bubble. And you're burning fire and nabbing. And the woman that you lay down in bed with is a Seventh-day Adventist. Now tell me. I, I'm not making up nothing. No, this is what I'm talking about. Now I ain't burning fire on you and your woman. I'm just saying. You need to cool out. Some of you, you're too hot and you're not ready for the battlefield. Yeah, let me get on my plane, you know? St. Lucia, here we come. I ain't going on Virgin Atlantic. I'm flying Leon. Holy man, you will Last year. Ja, Rastafari. Bless. 